Hey, Andrew. Hi, my name is Megan and get ready with me today. We're going to talk about benchmark brands and overconsumption in the industry. And we're going to do pretty much a full face of House Labs products because they are one of my benchmark brands. And there's a bit of Mac sprinkled in there as well. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe and turn on post notifications so you never miss a post. And if you want to get ready with me, please keep on watching. Good morning. It's really the afternoon. I've had my AC on for like three days straight apartment's freezing so that's why i have my clever crew neck on you didn't see <laughs> i got sent pr from house lab so i did reach out to them and i was like please please, please can if you have space can i please be on your pr because like i just i cherish the, the brand so much i'm not a crazy person like i don't ask for like an insane amount of of product um just stuff that i really wanted that i also got a really precious um letter have anything fun to send to you i did want to write you a letter saying thank you thank you for your informative content and sharing your skill set thank you for giving me tips and tricks that help me feel beautiful again after having my daughter and becoming a stay-at-home mom thank you for cultivating an environment where you share but don't shame in a world of overconsumption you've made a safe space in working with what i have at home and turned me into an informed buyer of beauty products um this means more to me than any amount of money, any amount of PR. It's, and I always share them with my mom too. And she's like, people are so kind. Um, so they, I've kept everything that's ever been sent to me. And I don't know, it just warms my heart. It warms my heart, it really does. So I did a video on TikTok yesterday, like right after I got the product. Um, and I was fresh from the gym. So I had like a layer of sweat on my face. I'm excited to like incorporate this. I was gonna order Tim Hortons, but I was like, I just, I'm addicted to the bagel belts, okay? They're so good. Always fix West Magic Radius. I've also, it's pretty crazy. Like I brought, I brought Mac to TikTok. I reignited Cool Tones on the app and I've started or added to, but I think it's coming from an account like mine. I've started the conversation around benchmark brands and overconsumption online. I'm sure that it, happens amongst beauty consumers themselves, but it it doesn't often happen with creators themselves saying that, especially I'm so mindful of like what I show online. Like I don't do unboxings anymore. I don't really show when I get something new. I'll incorporate something new into a video. I haven't washed my hair in like three days either. Um, and I really try to stick to showing what I'm like, showing what I'm talking about. So like, yes, I can like the odd or use the odd product, but if I'm saying these are the five brands I love and it's really all I want to use, I need my content to be, to showcase that. I still feel like people haven't quite got it yet. And it's that need and want to show more product, to get more views, to get brands attention. And I don't, I don't care. I just don't care. House Labs and Mob Beauty are probably the only two other brands I would work for. And I think with other makeup artists on the app who are like exclusive and like freelance, their clients are their bread and butter, not a brand's recognition. So I just think it's very interesting the more makeup artists get on TikTok and talk about these types of things versus just influencers or content creators and like beauty enthusiasts. I saw Kat Quinn, so she's Trend, for, she's the one that brought me and Thanks It's Mac to the surface. She was getting her makeup done, they put the gel in, I'm gonna have to use the Pro Locked Brow Gel, and then I saw them use the lash applicators to pinch the brows thin. I have to try that, I have to try that, I have to try that. Plan today. Okay, wait, what do I need to put down, serumizer? Am I doing my eyes? I don't know what I wanna do with my eyes, we'll figure it out. The plan today, is I'm going to, I went to one of my favorite coffee shops yesterday and I'm working on a project, a little personal passion project of mine. And I'm gonna work on that today. And then I have a YouTube video to edit. Oh my God, is this one almost done too? No, there's no way this has to be an old one. This is the old one. I have a new one, there's no way. I was saying on 24 hour eye base, I was saying a video on um, benchmark brands, but like the tone of, getting the top six viral products all the time and rushing to get them is just giving its high school energy. Um, and it's that like FOMO that you're not gonna be cool because you don't have the coolest next product. Like, please give me a break. 
um, light level three in the bronzer. So I got to restock on this because I love it. It's matte, but it has a lot of radiance to it and like creaminess, like it's very buttery. I'm gonna do a wash on my lid. Having benchmark brands are having brands that you 100% believe in. However you get there is up to you. Um, whether it's through products or imagery or core values, like whatever that might be, those are the ones that you believe in them and their product full stop. Meaning, yeah, sure, maybe they'll launch like one or two things that you don't like, but you have confidence in saying whatever they drop, I'm not gonna hesitate about it. I know it's gonna be amazing. I don't have to think about it. And the fewer benchmark brands you have, the more exciting makeup shopping becomes because you're only putting your money towards the benchmark brands. It's giving like trends are for the anxious kind of thing. If you, let's say you have the most amazing concealer in the whole world. So you're like, this is perfect on my skin. This looks exactly how I want. It lasts how I want. It feels how I want. That's like having the most amazing boyfriend in the entire world. And then someone's trying to be like, but that guy over there is better. You cannot convince me. You cannot convince me. And I'm not gonna go, I'm not gonna go looking unless something stops working for me. Conversations that have come up as well is like, but like you can miss, you know, technology's changing and finding other things that you like, but you don't, A, you don't have to do that. You don't have to constantly be looking for stuff that's new. It's a capitalist society. You don't constantly have to be on the hunt for the new thing, constantly hustling. It's, that's a lie, it's a lie, it's a lie. Um, and when you stick within your benchmark brands and you commit to them, you watch the technology happen. If you started with House Labs in the beginning, back in 2019, they've entirely rebranded two or two and a half years ago. The technology changed for them. The artistry changed for them. Had you stuck with them, you would have seen that. Mac, 40 years of evolution and products and technology. You, you're there. You figure it out. You, you learn it. You miss that. You miss those things when you're too busy looking everywhere else. And I feel like that applies to so many things in life. These are another Very Miss Megan product, um, high power pigment paint. This one I had bought during the launch. This applied with a brush, like if you want um, like an intense metallic chrome finish, they're stunning. I actually put that thinly over top. You're not gonna bully me, not that anybody is, but you're not gonna bully me into using brands I don't want to and spending my money on stuff I don't want to to get views online. Like it's just, I don't, I just don't care. I care about how makeup me makes people feel. So I care about the industry as a whole and the bigger picture versus the product itself. And people are always like, but they're probably like, oh, you make so much money on TikTok. And I'm like, I don't make anything on TikTok. It's my passion and my love of makeup is what drives me to do it and then watching you guys become inspired or send letters or just tell me that you like feel more confident or you've i've reinvigorated your love of makeup um and you want to experiment and try things and find yourself that's the win that is the win when you stick to that and you ride that wave like you'll always be happy when you look for the answer in a product it's just not there. Um, if you remember, House Labs did my favorite black eyeliner in the whole world. It's probably in the original um, video. And this one is really pigmented and really creamy and nice. It's just the other one was a different formula. It was called like um, high power or it was really wet. So I could use like a fluffy brush to blend it out. And I still have the original House Labs liners. I loved this one. I mean, I still do. It's like a baby pink. Maybe we'll wear that today. I was just so, I was so obsessed when these came out. I think I lost one because I left the cap off and it dried out. It's purple. Oh yeah, this purple had like shimmer in it. I think another take too, like when I've always say like use what you have is I think that's a very MAC coated thing because it's never about the product. It's about the tone, the texture, the finish, how it wears, and that's how you speak to it. So it's not espresso eyeshadow. It's a matte, deep, rich, kind of warm brown. And when you use that, you can find that amongst other things versus just espresso. People get, it's like designer. It's like getting hung up on the, the name versus the functionality. They're kind of different, but it's okay because I'm filming this for you guys. I'm not really doing anything. Okay, cute.
I just try the, char the charcoal one, so I, I would die to be on House Labs PR, literally die. Charcoal. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I love a gray. I love gray, I love gray. The video before this one, where I have Cozy Gray and Omega on the lid, like in the brush video, that is one of my favorite, favorite looks in the entire world. That is my corn star makeup. Let's actually fade. I'm gonna put charcoal. These are a really nice texture. Kind of like, um, they're kind of grippy. This is an eyeliner I had from the Makeup Shack and I love the color, except when I was taking it off, it stung my eyes. So that's a no for me. Another reason why I stick with the brands that I love and kind of know where the product is coming from. I'm gonna just keep the eyes really simple because I have more base product. This is just waterproof Max Stack. And then we'll do extended play on the bottom. And your benchmark brands can be whatever you want it to be. If you're somebody that owns a crap ton of makeup right now, I would pick what you have the most of and put it into one drawer or one bucket or whatever. Put this other house up on the waterline. And start doing your makeup from that group that you just pulled because you have the most of it. So it's a high chance that you really like it. And then as you start to think of other products you might want, you pull them from your other section. So you're gonna have your benchmark. So like basically the drawers that I just did here are all of my MAC product that I'm currently using and a lot of excess MAC product. And then on the others, like over there, I have other makeup and I will slowly start to bring it over as I think about like, as I think about all of the makeup I own. I'm pretty good with knowing everything that I own. And then you'll start to see what you're actually into hyper real bomb obviously oh my god if you didn't see either i was i had a shout out in women's wear daily in the beauty edition talking about how mac stays relevant in pop culture like the whole thing was based on mac and their 40th, 40th anniversary and drew the creative director gave me a shout out which he absolutely you know he like didn't need to my name is in there and i think that that's so so freaking cool if you want go on to talk to to watch that video hyper bomb just makes me look so beautiful okay i think i'm gonna use deep no okay think megan think okay, i'm gonna put face protect down and another thing too with benchmark brands let's say like you want to add something to your makeup routine you're like you know what i have a lot of cream blushes and i really need a powder blush you go to your benchmark brands for them. You don't go to the most viral product, you go to the brands that you know and love. And then let's say, you know, they your, the, that brand doesn't make powder blush. You should have like a backup of two to three brands that you're curious about. So mine is Danessa Myricks, Patrick Ta, Makeup by Mario, and Pat McGrath. And for me, it's artistry based, it's not price point. Another thing for you could be price point that those brands you're curious about, um, maybe it's a cheaper brand. That's where you dabble. Having benchmark brands hold yourself accountable and creates boundaries within the industry. So I'm taking Deep Two in Strobe Dewy Skin Tint and I'm gonna use that as kind of my underpainting just because I want to be really shiny. One of my former friends, we were talking once about, I don't know, I guess designer stuff and he was like, why the hell would I spend X amount of dollars on a Supreme you know, backpack when I can get a knockoff and literally nobody's gonna question me. Nobody's gonna question you. It's the feeling that you associate with having the Supreme. The more that you learn about how we function as people and our own self-concepts, and you realize that everything is just us, everything is just our own thoughts, it will change your life. I, I promise you. Okay, so this is our base. It's actually really similar to the shade of light level three. Foundation, the House Labs foundation has a very like perfected finish to it. Um, and so I'm putting this down because it will just help, I think, make it look a little bit more Miss Megan. And I used way too much yesterday, but I knew that I had just forgotten. Yes, a powder brush. This is one of the most beautiful foundations in the whole world um, for me because it suits my needs. I'm taking a very low amount because it does that like latexy, rubbery, plump from within, but perfected looking finish. Like it's just 
it's so beautiful and when i look at pictures of gaga she obviously has beautiful skin then you add this on top of it like it's exactly what i want it's not it, I, if you like the serum powered foundation from mac but it's too shiny for you or doesn't stick well this would be kind of where you could go to very little it just really is that girl i want extra juicy skin Love it, lock it in. I think what throws me off a little bit too is how warm the eye is because it's really not something I would do. Like I could have done the this with like sandstone underneath, but I just want to use the product I have. How rude is that? Like dead center. They get a restock on my favorite concealer, um, but I'm still gonna try and use up what I have. Bright forecast. I'm 145, like cool, in House Labs. So House Labs does it the way Mac does it, where cool is golden. Um, and people were shocked because they're like, I thought you were way darker. No, I, and I'm an NC25, NC30. That is just on the cusp of like light going into light medium. It's just that I'm very bronzy and my undertone is strong. So I'm still very fair with a stronger undertone versus like, fair but also pale people think i'm like an nc 40 42 very much not of oh a little bit i noticed yesterday i went a little bit heavier in fix plus and then we're gonna do so this is 13 light neutral which is like pretty much my skin tone it's like a shade lighter the original color that I got was 175, which was like, had a little bit too much depth to it. And outside of like benchmark brands as well too, there could be benchmark products that you're willing to play around with. So for me, once upon a time it was concealer, but once I got the house house concealer, I was like, I don't need to be searching or having fun with concealer. Mine is lip liner, you know, well, I mean, if you follow me on TikTok, you know that there's no lip liner I won't try <laughs> within reason. I don't buy waterproof ones, but like standard wooden pencils in cool tones or like neutral pinks, I will always, always try. But I also almost restrict myself to buying lip liners when I'm traveling because it just makes it like a little bit extra special. Obviously that's not gonna be the same for everybody, but I got one of these. Um, this is Glassy Hibiscus. I'm still trying to figure out the way that I like it. So I had done it underneath yesterday, but I don't think that that's the vibe. And because it has that glass shine, I don't think it's suited for boyfriend style blush. Um, so I'm taking boyfriend blush that would be down here and I'm putting it up a little bit higher. These kind of resemble like casual lip and cheek color. This was the one that had like the coolest undertone to it. I really think that these will stick best to bare skin. Like, I really think that this is the product for somebody who maybe just does concealer, like spot conceals, and then likes blush versus like a full glam. I don't have a powder blush from them, um, but I am gonna just highlight and just clean up. Yeah, like I feel like I want this texture higher. I went the inside out at 10 p.m. yesterday. And then I stayed out wandering around the beaches till like one in the morning for no reason. And the way that this makeup just like the humidity mixed with it and it was just so beautiful on the skin. Also, I'm putting my nails back on and I think I'm going to go back to my roots of stiletto nails where back in the day, no one was doing still stiletto nails. So like they always came out almond, um, but now I can get real stiletto nails. And I just think that that's going to be the vibe because Every single photo that I take to Ryan, I always get square nails and I'm always showing him stiletto s designs. So he always has to like customize them for a square nail. And I'm thinking like, Megan, clearly you want something. And then maybe my whole thing will just be, now I just change my nail shape whenever I want. I'm not committed to one single nail shape. Sometimes I want square, sometimes I want stiletto, sometimes I want short. I just right now want them to feel elegant but miss megan like i can't have basic 
almond nails, no offense. But this was fun. And then I get my hand tattooed on August 1st. So I'm very excited for that. I really feel like these need to be set. Or maybe it's that they have to stay concentrated. I'm not sure. I'm gonna tuck it into my eye. I think it's nailing the placement with the texture. So I feel like maybe it's almost like a blush, yeah, a blush draping situation. I really like the color though. I'm happy with all my little stuff. I got the loose powder try. It's actually really beautiful. So my original favorite loose powder ever was Derma Blend, which was like very waterproof. I used to put it under face and body as like a prep step for longevity. Um, and then that got, that got discontinued. Um, and it's got quite a, like a good amount of coverage to it. Then I got the Mob Beauty, which is my favorite because it's radiant matte. Um, and it gives my skin still a little bit of sheen. I'm using Pro Set and Blur, which is very matte and very thin. This sits somewhere in between. And then when you have multiple favorites and they're all within your benchmark brands, you can have them for different reasons because these all have different finishes versus when you stretch it across too many different brands, you might find that things are too similar to each other. Like what's the reason you go for that one? And sometimes you don't know. Your answer could be, well, I ride or die for this brand. Yeah, it's really beautiful. It has a more um, like basic finish. So I guess more natural, my bad. Um, it's not as matte and blurring and smoothing as Pro Set and Blur. And then it's not as radiant and soft as the Mop Beauty one. So I guess if you wanted just a powder and you don't want to have to think about it. Like to me, like I like very specific finishes on my skin. So that's what I'm looking for from a product. I'm looking to see the makeup on my skin because I'm looking for a specific texture. I would reach for this on a regular day versus like a glam day or a going out day. And the other thing too, one of the bigger differences between high end and like drugstore is just high end has a lot more long-term skincare benefits in makeup. It usually has higher concentrations of active ingredients or main ingredients versus drugstore. So for sure, there's a drugstore foundation that could have hyaluronic acid in it. The percentage of it, the base of it, and the long-term effects of it are just not gonna be the same as something like uh, Chanel, for example. There's nothing wrong with that, but that's another reason why you might pick something over something else. Someone actually brought up a really good point the other day. So I was given this and I used it on TikTok um, in my wedding makeup and I immediately knew on my face that there was something wrong, that it just wasn't, it wasn't the vibe. And the point that someone made up was like, because I stick to the same product, because I know what I like and I'm so specific about it, I can immediately notice when something isn't gonna be a product for me. And when you look around too much at everything, you're trying too many different things, you're not allowing yourself to get used to certain things. And that's where people struggle and have so much, so much makeup that they don't love. I like Milani bronzers and I like the lipstick. And the second ingredient is alcohol. I don't want to spray that on my face. I also don't need niacinamide in my spray. I don't know if this is the right eye. It kind of looked like saran wrap. Oh my God, lashes are just literally everything. Like I went from cute to extra cute. And like makeup is so nuanced. It's so nuanced. Like the TikTok specifically has made it very black and white. And that's why people are struggling, but it's not true because people are talking about the functionality of a product without, and this is not everybody's gonna be like this, but without the expertise on it, you can't always speak to how it incorporates in makeup. And that's like a makeup routine. And that's the difference between somebody who only does their own makeup and someone who does makeup on other people. My natural language, because I exclusively do makeup on other people, more than I do my own, is I am always speaking in terms of someone else when it comes to makeup. I don't know, it's, 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 it, it is what it is. But that's why the shift needs to, it's not that the influencer style doesn't need to exist. I think it's still great for what it is. We need to shift. And if you really want to be happy with makeup, you need to look for your benchmark brands 
and you need to start following makeup artists on the app not people doing hauls like if i see one more video of someone who exclusively just shows the product that they buy and there's nothing else on it you're part of the problem and like there's been times i've filmed videos and i've not posted them because i'm like wait what's my intent behind this so like i went to show something that mac had launched and i just showed all of the colors and i was like wait what's the intent here and I never put it up and I just started slowly incorporating the product into videos more naturally. Not everybody's gonna be like that. Not everybody needs to be like that, but it's something that's important to me. I look so cute. This is Peach Quartz, I already had this. The one that I want is I think Moon Quartz maybe, it's the white one. But then I also have that same white highlighter from like four holidays ago that will do the trick. I love a white highlighter. Maybe one of my next Get Ready With Me videos, I'll do a full face of Melt. I love face and body. I love strobe dewy skin tint. I love the Melt Skin Finish Glaze. How, how do I wear all of it all at the same time? But I also think that's what's fun about making videos is because I can do so much. Okay, this one's really good. Try this one on. So I've loved Le Monster Matte Lip Crayons. It's woo. It's such a good formula. I got them to send me this baby pink one. Light peony matte. Because I think it'll be so pretty. It's so pretty. It's so cute. Where is stone? Maybe the Kiko one. Let me just try this Kiko one first. This is, I don't know what number. I think it was 33. Yeah, Kiko 33. Kiko was a brand that I discovered when I was in Amsterdam, I think. Yeah. I was in Amsterdam seeing Bring Me the Horizon. Oh, I love that. And then I wanted this one because to lighten things, to make a concealer lip. Like, don't even speak to me. Don't, don't look at me that way. Mm, I love stone for definition and then I have to take it somewhere else even though this is really pretty this is giving like kind of sexy um a viewer sent me this Kiko Hydro Gloss in 27 it makes the most creamiest like milkiest looking don't don't even look at me that way there's enough pigment in there that it just I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Please, please. Give me a break. That's what was missing yesterday. I was like, I look like myself, but I don't look like myself. And that's because this step is so important. Oh yeah, look at that. Are you kidding me? Look at that. Oh, see. Stufix powder just is is that girl mm. a little bit of stay over love it lock it in no because this is so, oh oh i have a crush thank you guys so much for watching i hope that this inspires you guys to start thinking about benchmark brands and brands you really love and products you really love and sticking to them if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe and turn on post notifications so you never miss a post. If you don't feel like waiting for a YouTube video, you can follow me over on TikTok and I'm also on Instagram, all under the same name, at Miss Megan Robinson. Let me know what your favorite House Labs product is. <laughs>